We begin and end this season with fire. Usually, we begin this week by burning the palms from last year's Palm Sunday procession. That's where the ashes come from, in case you didn't know. The sole purpose of that fire is to create the ashes that we'll use today. And there's no gathering for celebration, maybe just a couple of us gathered around. It's, it's usually, for me, a solitary affair. And the ash left at the end of that is what we will use to mark our foreheads, or this year, the tops of our heads with a sign to remind us of the solitary work that we all must do from time to time. In the ancient tradition of repentance, we put on sackcloth and literally ashes. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickednesses. It is time to clean house. And as one of my old seminary professors used to remind us, oh, how we hate to clean house. Confessing our sins, it's, it's not like it lets God in on anything that God doesn't already know, any mess that we've made that God hasn't already seen. But Fred, Frederick Beekner writes that until you confess them, however, they are an abyss between you and God. And when you confess them, They become a bridge. The sins that we're called to confess fall into two categories, personal and corporate. When the church is gathered together in worship, it isn't primarily concerned with the individual. It isn't our personal time, our private time with God. So when we gather as church, even when we are praying in our living rooms along with someone on a computer screen, we are acting corporately as the body of Christ. Personal time with God, that's cultivated separately. The expectation of the prayer book is that you will spend time examining your conscience and, your, and confess your own personal sins, either alone, just you and God, or with a priest in the sacrament of reconciliation. Most people don't realize that that confession that we pray together in our liturgies, whether it's morning prayer, evening prayer, uh, or noonday prayer, or the Eucharist, or any time that we pray some form of the confession, it is a confession of our corporate sin. We say, we confessed that we have sinned. It's an acknowledgement of the sin in which we all swim, whether we are aware of it or not. The author Joseph Brandt writes that, in the United States, where individualism is especially emphasized, the notion of structural sin often seems foreign to us. We are willing to accept personal responsibility for our own individual sinfulness, but we frequently dismiss or deny our involvement in social sins that benefit us and withhold benefits from others. The ideology of individualism insists that individuals can choose to separate themselves from responsibility for the actions of a community, even if they are indelibly a part of that community. Our corporate confession stands in opposition to that great Western heresy of individualism. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. We are intricately bound to one another in ways that go beyond comprehension. Jesus himself had a whole lot to say on that very subject. And secondly, these ashes that we don today are also reminders of our mortality. We are made of dust, literally. The same dust as all of creation. Literally, the same dust as the stars. 
And to that dust, we shall all one day return. Our time here is fleeting and it is finite. How then, we might ask ourselves, can we make the most of it? Jesus answers that question with his Sermon on the Mount. Be generous and giving, he says, but not for your own glory or fame, but for the genuine love of others. Pray, but not so that others think that you are holier than they are, but for the honest desire to be in relationship with God. Relationship requires communication, talking and listening. Practice self-denial, Jesus says, but not to merely seem blissfully unattached to worldly things so that others will admire you but to genuinely be blissfully unattached to worldly things. Free yourself from the base and earthly desire to have it all. Be reminded of our dependence on God alone. At the end of Lent on Holy Saturday, we will kindle another fire, but to a wholly different effect. That fire won't be for the sole purpose of creating ash, but to welcome light, the light of Christ, resurrected and eternal. We won't be marked with ash in the sign of the cross, but usually others would be marked with the sign of the cross in chrism. This sign is the seal of baptism, marking us as Christ's own forever. That fire on Easter Eve won't be to remind us of our mortality, but of our eternal life with the risen Christ. However, before we get there, we have got a lot of work to do. So enter this season earnestly, but never lose sight of that light on the other end.